So yesterday we had looked at sampling distributions, which were probability distributions for a sample statistic. So uh, we were looking at the probability distribution of the sample mean, where you take repeated uh, samples and find the mean of those samples. So we had considered a population that consists of equally likely ones, threes, fives, and sevens. And we were working on finding all, well, we found all two element samples, 1, 1, 1, 3, 1, 5, 1, 7, 3, 1, 3, 3, 3, 5, 3, 7, and et cetera. Um, we were working on constructing the probability distribution of x bar, the means of samples. And that's this table, x bar versus the probability of x bar. So we had uh, counted how many had a mean of 1, how many of our 16 possible samples. And there were 1 out of 16. Uh, 2 out of 16 had a mean of 2. 3 out of 16 had a mean of 3. 4 out of 16 had a mean of 4. Uh, and then means of 5 were here and here and here. So there were 3 samples out of 16 that had a mean of 5. So this is a 3 out of 16. Uh, mean of 6 should have two samples here and here. So 2 out of 16. And then mean of 7, there was just one sample, 7 and 7, that had a mean of 7. So 1 out of 16. And if you sum all these up, you get 16 out of 16, which is equal to 1. And that should always happen when you're summing up the probability of x bar, as long as you have all of the possible x bar values, the mean values here. And then remember um, to find the mean. So that's our sampling distribution. That's part B. And then in part C, uh, construct a histogram for part B. So let's uh, go ahead and construct our histogram for this distribution. So on the horizontal axis, uh, we are going to have our values for x bar. And on the vertical axis is going to be a uh, probability of x bar. So down here, we've got x bar. And up here, we've got probability of x bar. And x bar values uh, range from 1 to 7. Those will be at the centers of the bars. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then our probabilities went from 1 16th up to 4 16th. So let's do uh, 4 16ths here. Uh, divide in half, and then divide each half in half. So for x bar equals 1, we've got a bar of height 1 16th. So center our bar over 1, height 1 16th. Uh, 2 had a height of 2 sixteenths, so relative frequency of uh, sample mean being 2 is 2 sixteenths. Uh, sample mean of 3 had a relative frequency of 3 sixteenths, so a bar of height 3. Uh, relative frequency of 4 had a height of 4 sixteenths. And then they started going back down, so 3 sixteenths, 2 sixteenths, and 1 sixteenth. And what we see is that we have a symmetric distribution here, not a bell-shaped distribution, um, actually a tent distribution, uh, but definitely symmetric. The left half looks like the right half there. Uh, what is the probability that x bar, if you pick a random um, sample, that the mean of that sample is greater than uh, 3.5? So this actually was uh, part B. This is part A, uh, part C, D. So the probability that your x bar value is uh, actually, I should do it like this inside, probability that x bar is greater than 3.5. So uh, 3.5 is right here. So greater than 3.5 would be 4, 5, 6, or 7. So that's going to be probability that 
x bar is going to be greater than or equal 4, which is the same as the probability of x bar is 4, 5, 6, or 7. And then these are ors, 4 or 5 or 6 or 7. So that's addition rule. We're going to add those probabilities. So 4 16 3 16 2, and 1. So let's see, what is that? 7, 8, 9, 10 16 or 5 8 And you could convert that to a decimal if you want. I believe that is, uh, uh, is that 0.625, I think? Yeah. And then part E, uh, find uh, the expected value of x, so the mean of the original distribution. So you can do that up here. So here is our original distribution. We've got 1s, 3s, 5s, and 7s. So those are x values, not x bar values. And they're all equally likely, so they've got probability 1 fourth. And you want to find the mean of that distribution. You multiply all the way across, and then sum. So it's the sum of x times probability. So 1 times 1 fourth, 1 fourth. Uh, 3 times 1 fourth, 3 fourths. Uh, 5 times 1 fourth, 5 fourths. And 7 times 1 fourth, 7 fourths. So let's see, it's 12, 13, 16 fourths, which is 4. Um, so the mean of that original distribution is 4. And in fact, if these guys are equally likely, if you take an add, 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7, and divide by 4, you should get the same thing. And in fact, this is uh, 16 divided by 4 which is 4. So the mean of the original distribution is 4. Well, what about um, mu sub x bar, uh, the mean of the x bar distribution, or the expected value of the x bar distribution? Well, multiply straight across x bar times probability of x bar here, and then sum them up, and your mean will be down here. So 1 times 1 16th, 1 16th. Uh, 2 times 2 16ths, 4 16ths. Uh, 3 times 3 sixteenths, 9 sixteenths. 4 times 4 sixteenths, 16 sixteenths. 5 times 3 sixteenths, 15 sixteenths. Uh, 6 times 2 sixteenths is 12 sixteenths. And then 7 times 1 sixteenth is 7 sixteenths. Okay, and then we add all these guys up. And if you do that, you will get 64 out of 16, which is equal to 4. So notice the mean of the original distribution was 4, and the mean of the x bar distribution, the sampling distribution, is 4. And then also notice that the center of this symmetric distribution here is at 4, and uh, that is actually our mean of the x bar distribution, 4. So, and that was not by accident. Um, if you have an unbiased estimator, then um, mu sub x bar is always mu. So even if you didn't know the mean of your original distribution, uh, if you find the mean of the sampling distribution, it'll be the same, which is pretty cool. So that's how we gain more information about the population by taking repeated samples. That's what sampling distributions are about.